This simple device right here could save your engine from catastrophic failure, which could save you thousands of dollars. As most people know, oil is the lifeblood of your engine, and losing oil pressure is bad news. And recently we discovered the magic of an oil accumulator. Now, before you click off and say, so what, it's an oil accumulator, that's nothing new. We actually recently discovered that this is useful for more than just filling in the low spots and can actually result in better oil supply to your engine at all conditions. So let's get into it. What is an oil accumulator? An oil accumulator is basically an oil storage device which stores oil in a canister. There is usually some sort of bladder or piston uh, which uses pressurized air to accumulate the oil that will sort of pressurize the oil that comes in and push it back out when the engine needs it. In situations where the vehicle is experiencing large amounts of acceleration, where the oil pickup may become uncovered with oil and might start to suck air. An oil accumulator is extremely useful because it will store oil while the engine is running and the oil is pumping, and then it will push it back out and supply oil to the engine when the oil pump cannot. This is really useful for vehicles that are experiencing lots of lateral acceleration, or in our case, where our oil pan is designed for acceleration in the positive direction, and during the shutdown, we are experiencing lots of acceleration in the negative direction. The oil in the sump is sloshing forward in the oil pan. We've tried to make baffling to improve this situation, but we are seeing a loss of oil pressure in the shutdown. Now this is particularly useful on cars like this where you have an automatic transmission and you can't just simply push the clutch in and let the engine return to idle. In our case, we have to let the engine coast down because it is a reverse pattern transmission and we can't simply just shut the engine off because that will cause transmission damage. Some cars are equipped with something called a clean neutral, which allows them to basically shift the car back into neutral on the top end, but we don't have one of those because they're expensive and they're not really very street friendly. And this is a known phenomenon. If you watch Big Chief from Midwest Streetcars, he talks about this a lot and how he goes through his shutdown procedure. When those lines go away, that's me shutting off the ignition. That way the engine isn't running uh, when I'm in the shutdown and all the oil is sloshed to the front of the oil pan. The engine isn't in diesel trying to slow the car down with not enough RPM and no oil in the back of the oil pan. The only other way to really get around this problem where you're losing oil pressure in the shutdown is to go to a dry sump. Down here we got your dry sump. So we'll have dry sump oil system. We've always had a wet sump. That's some of the problems that we had with the old setup. On diesel with the parachutes out, mullet would lose oil pressure because all the oil would go to the front of the pan and I would just turn the car off. It's kind of not the ideal way to do it. This is also very expensive. And we were trying to avoid that on this car just because it involves a lot of extra complication and a couple thousand dollars worth of upgrades. And therefore we installed a Moroso oil accumulator on this car and it completely solved the problem in the shutdown. In fact, let's look at a data overlay. You can clearly see that the dash line is the old setup, the solid line is the new setup, and we can see that the oil pressure maintains in the shutdown. That being said, we noticed something weird. Oil pressure had improved everywhere at all operating conditions. This didn't really make sense to me. If anything, there is more load on the oiling system with the oil accumulator added. And I have always heard that an oil accumulator will never result in more oil pressure. And it's only really meant to fill the gaps. And it's sort of a compromise between a wet sump and dry sump setup. However, we saw improved oil pressure at all operating conditions. 
And this was very perplexing. This brings us to another reason why people convert to dry sumps. Not only is a dry sump useful for situations where you're experiencing lots of acceleration, it is much easier to keep a tall, skinny tank from uncovering the pickup in lots of acceleration, but it also allows you to change the pulley ratio of your dry sump pump. Now we have an externally mounted oil pump that's on the engine and that's driven by a belt off the crankshaft. One of the first advantages to doing it this way is now we have control over the pump speed. We can speed it up or slow it down by changing the size of the pulleys. But again, dry sumps are really expensive. With engines such as the Coyote LS 2JZ and this right here, the Vortec 4200, if you're running a factory oil pump, you don't have the opportunity to change the drive ratio of the oil pump. In other words, the engine speed and the oil pump speed will always be the same because they are directly tied to one another. What this means is that we have a pump that from GM was designed to spin at 6,000 RPMs max, and we are now taking it to 8,000 RPMs. Now, if we get into a little bit of engine theory, the oiling demands of the engine don't really increase a whole lot with RPM. However, the pump speed is, is definitely going up. And this gets into sort of how oil pumps and pumps in general work. Every pump has what's called a pump curve. There are certain conditions where the pump will operate efficiently and other conditions where it will do weird stuff like what is called cavitation. Basically what happens is the pump gets spinning so fast that it will create air bubbles or sometimes vacuum bubbles in the oil and it will cause aeration of the oil. This is bad because air is not a very good lubricant. So what can we do about this? Actually, people with the LS engine have already sort of looked into this problem and tried to sort of band-aid the solution. If we look at some aftermarket solutions, some guys are actually taking the output of the pump and bypassing it back into the suction section of the pump in order to create a little bit more oiling demand at high RPM. The problem with this is you're kind of wasting the pumping potential of the engine and it would be more useful to be able to take that oil and do something with it. Don't you agree? It would be nice if you could almost like accumulate the oil pressure and then use it in situations where it might be useful. And that brings me to my point. I think we have found a hidden gem here. What I think is happening is the oil accumulator is causing there to be more oiling demands at high RPM and it's putting the pump into a happier spot, very similar to this aftermarket bypass system that people have found to be successful. So it's kind of a win-win. You get a better situation for your pump at high RPM and you fill in the gaps when the engine loses oil pressure. Pretty cool, right? But I don't think we are the first ones to have discovered this. Every year, my dad and I go to the Haltech World Cup Finals held at Maryland International Raceway. And we basically go there just to walk around the pits and get ideas for our race cars. We look for cool stuff like this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. And something we have noticed is that the more budget racers are using accumulators very often. And we noticed a trend that a lot of the high revving Coyote combos seem to really favor an oil accumulator. And we think that they have probably found the same thing that we did. So for situations where you can't afford a dry sump and you want to supply the engine with oil, in the shutdown, I present to you what we have found to be a hidden gem, the oil accumulator. And by the way, this video isn't sponsored, but it should be. Hit me up, Moroso. All right, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.